Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Illinois State Fairgrounds at the Springfield Mile for the first heat race. Cody Goforth on the pole. Luke Martin fastest out of the Heat 1 drivers in practice. Green flag is out. Each of these heat races are eight laps long. The top eight finishers from each heat advance to the main event. Everyone else will head to the last chance qualifier where the top four from that will advance to the main event and the last four positions will be determined on provisionals. Luke Martin wasting no time going to the inside of Goforth for the race lead. All three Breeding Enterprises trucks in this heat race. As Huck Davis makes a move to the inside of Goforth, three wide, no caution flags in the heat races. Cautions will be on though for the last chance qualifier in the main event. Three wide for third is Blake Warren looking for the top spot on teammate Luke Martin. Now Luke dominated the race back at Knoxville. Led the entire thing. Also won his heat race along with starting on the pole as Blake Warren now challenging him for the top spot. Lap times at this track. You're doing pretty good if you're running like low 27s, 27 fours or, or faster. But Blake Warren will pass Luke Martin. Luke though gonna look right back to his inside. Draft is gonna play a big role in this race weekend. Um, as you'll see a lot of super speedway esque racing here on the dirt, but you'll also get a little bit of an outside run if you drive through the corner in the right manner. As Luke Martin looking to slide back up in front of Blake Warren. As Huck Davis comes to challenge for the lead. They're going about, about 145 to 150 down the straightaway into the corner. And then down to about a buck 05. Maybe a little slower, maybe a little faster. But how about Huck Davis challenging Luke Martin for the lead here in this heat race. And, you know, this is unprecedented. I mean, look at this. Huck Davis and Goforth up at the front here. Larry Hagan, of course, recently denied his first time win once again. This time of his own miscalculation. Luke Martin might get put three wide here. And they will do just that. Goforth on the bottom three wide looking for the lead at three laps to go. Three wide here is crazy. Blake Warren getting dicey. Oh, are they going to go four wide? Oh, what a voice crack there on my part. Oh, they are four wide in heat number one for second place. This never ends well. Oh, Luke Blake, don't wreck it. Don't wreck it. Two to go. Still four wide. Oh, this is unbelievable. They finally get it clean. KT Larson, though. Looking for a hole three wide. Blake Warren on that four wide again. Huck Davis must be like, these guys are crazy. This is for a heat race of all things. Will Hagen clear Blake Warren? He does. Jeez, the race is so crazy. We haven't even been able to talk about the cutoff. White flag in the air. Eighth place right now is Bob Burns. As it looks like Mitchell Carter was involved in something with Ace Wild and Brandon Morris, who has retired from this heat race. But off of turn four, it's going to be Huck Davis winning heat number one. As, you, as with Knoxville, we're going to be doing the dice roll. So if you finish first in your heat, you're going to start anywhere from first to fourth, second, anywhere from fifth to eighth, and so on. So Huck Davis, Larry Hagan, KT Larson, Luke Martin, Blake Warren, Cody Gopher, Ian Brandt, and Bob Burns will make it in from the heat as Monaco, Ace Wild, Mitchell Carter, and Brandon Morris head to the LCQ. Let's see if we can find out what happened to the 89 truck. Well, this accident happened back on lap two, and we saw the four wide at the front at the end of the heat race. They were four wide at the back, and Morris is just going to slide up in the ace, and ace slides up in the carter and into the outside wall. The 89 and the 22 went. No safer barriers here at this track. 
And that took Carter out of contention, and it pretty much took Ace out of contention as well, so they will all head to the last chance qualifier. Well, that is a tough, tough break for Brandon Morris. Second week in a row, they've junked a truck. Getting ready for heat number two. Ryan Butcher was fastest in practice out of the heat two drivers. Lushan, though, on the pole. Springer to her outside. AJ Jones, Butcher, Kukulon, Breeding, Dewey Shram the third, and Rubino Gonzalez in the first four rows. And Dewey Shram the third, fresh off his win at Pensacola. Looking to race his way into the dirt race this time around. I believe they made the Knoxville race. I pretty sure they did by the way they're actually going about a buck 20 through the turns uh got the updated readings from uh the team and the tower and all that stuff and yeah they're going about a buck 20 through the corner so brandon morris hit that outside wall at about a buck 10 and he's being checked out in the infield care center but signs are looking good for him looking like his he'll be able to participate in the last chance qualifier as Kukulon diving for the lead on Alexa Lushan. Kukulon was very strong back at Knoxville, won his heat race, and was a top three truck until he got taken out by a lap truck. Oh, but they are getting racy in heat number two, just like they were in heat one. Three wide for the lead, it's AJ Jones on the inside line. Looking like we could have a much more competitive heat number two here. Jones three wide they're three wide behind them for another position Brett Houck looking to maybe make it four wide don't recommend doing that one bit oh Brett Houck thought better of it and he backed out Kukulon and Jones fighting for the lead Rubino Gonzalez is looking to stick Ryan Butcher in the last chance qualifier Behind them, Wyatt Quayle, Major Robinson, and Nelson Reeves. In sight of the transfer position, but not fighting for it. Kukulon looking to go back for the lead. Dewey Shram the third. Looking to challenge to the inside of AJ Jones for second. We saw Huck Davis win heat one. Did Brett Hout get a good amount of data from watching that? Butcher's back inside the top eight. Stick the 34 of Rubino Gonzalez back out. Oh, Springer and AJ Jones and Brett Houck almost four wide again. But Dewey holding it in line. Single file in second place. Jones in third. Two to go at the start finish line. Does Dewey Shram have anything for Sebastian Kukulon? Oh, he's going to slide up. So will Kukulon Jones to the inside. Springer looking to come with him. Transfer spot battle is on between Nick Breeding and Rubino Gonzalez. Breeding missing Pensacola. They were out of provisionals and they weren't top six in go or go home. Trying to make up for that by racing his way in here today. AJ Jones is going to pass Dewey Shram for second. Kukulano looks like he's clean sailing here. Or clear sailing. Can AJ Jones do anything to close the distance? No, it's going to be Sebastian Kukulon. Winning heat number two. And Rubino Gonzalez got by Nick Breeding for that final transfer spot. So Breeding, Robinson, Reeves, and Quayle will head to the last chance qualifier. Breeding had the spot at the white flag. As it looks like someone has a problem back here. And Breeding's truck has damage. So not sure what was up with this. But let's take a look at the pass Rubino made on Nick Breeding. Here's the white flag lap. 
Between the 34 and the 87, you see Breeding slid up in the middle of one and two. Rubino had a run, went to his inside. And then in turns three and four, Rubino just sent it and slid up in front of Nick Breeding. And it was over from there, so Breeding will start anywhere from first to fourth in the last chance qualifier. And he should have a pretty good shot at racing his way into this one. Getting geared up for heat number three. Malik Nevins fastest in practice, but it's J.D. Martin who goes on the pole. By the way, that's fastest in practice out of this heat from Malik Nevins. As we'll compile the practice data after the heats are done. As I'm recording all these lives. Dagby and C Roberto Crown Jr. wasting no time. Three wide move, borderline four wide on lap one for the race lead. And Nevins getting shuffled back fast. Roberto Crown Jr. won the last chance qualifier race back at Knoxville. He wants to race his way in here today at Springfield. This is insane. Boston Jones on the bottom, almost four wide. Nevins is going to squeeze it on Dagby. I would not recommend that. And meanwhile, Phil Parker is watching all the madness unfold in front of him. If they wreck and he misses it, he just might race his way into a race. How about that for Falcon Racing Incorporated if they could get Phil Parker to race his way in? But Parker, one of... Oh, and Benny Watson has a problem. Benny Watson was involved in something, and he is going to have to limp his way to the finish of this one. Could it have had something to do with that 69? Who knows? We'll have to look at the end of the heat race. But for Falcon Racing Incorporated, it would be big if either Phil Parker or Bo the Cameron could race their way into one of these races. They're in heats three and four. The smaller of the two heat of the four heats, heats one and two had 12 trucks each. Heat three and four have 11. But they still all go to the last chance qualifier all the same. I'm trying to think here. The last chance qualifier at Knoxville had 18 trucks. Or no, 19 trucks, I believe. And the uh, last chance qualifier today here at Springfield will have 14 trucks. It's only 46 trucks entered in the race. How about Christian Vargas and Francois Chastain? Second and third. They've tamed it down at the front. Nevin still getting put to the top three wide there, but he gets the run, gets it to single file there, fourth place. I'm just flabbergasted at the racing we've seen here today. It's been incredible. This is the fight for the final transfer spot at three to go. It's between Dagby Boston Jones and Zachary Bilson. Bilson currently first man out, looking to follow his Alliance teammate into that position past Boston Jones as Christian Vargas is going for the lead. So far, we've seen the Fords win both the heat races as Nevins pushes up in the Francois Chastain. And looking, looking like J.D. Martin, the only Ford with a chance at winning this heat race. Remember, you win the heat, you start anywhere from first to fourth. So far, it's between Huck Davis, Kukulon for that pole position on the dice roll but JD Martin wants to add his name to that mix but so does Christian Vargas a white flag will be out this time by JD getting the run on the top line battle for the transfer spot between Jones and Bilson as Vargas peeks to the inside of JD Martin down he's side by side with Nevins behind them can JD do anything on the top here? Oh no, it looks like he turned in a little too early there. Had to jerk it back to the outside. And Christian Vargas is going to come out of this thing as the Heat 3 winner. And the transfer spot went to Boston Jones over Zachary Bilson. Those two were passing each other back left and right. Everybody is stopping on the back straightaway for some reason. But we've got to look at what happened to Benny Watson and that last lap pass by Boston Jones. 
Another heat accident that happened on lap two in turn one. See Watson just gets a little closer to the wall, gets into it, and then just spins himself off of Zachary Bilson. So a single truck incident, tough break for Benny Watson, but we will see him in the last chance qualifier. Well, here was the race between Jones and Bilson. See, Bilson cleared Boston off of turn four, coming to the white flag. Boston got the run on the top line, dove it right to his inside. Actually cleared Bilson out of turn two. And then Bilson was just too far back. Boston ran a great line in three and four. And Bilson just unable to get back up there to challenge the 62 for the position. So we will see Bilson in the last chance qualifier as well. Getting ready to go green for the final heat race. Delello on the pole. Christopher Jones was fastest in practice out of these drivers. And Chase Dunbar will waste no time to the inside of the Lello. He will go. Aiden Smith looking to make it three wide. Now Aiden Smith and Christopher Jones made it into the Knoxville race on provisionals after failing to advance through the last chance qualifier. So you know they want to make it in. Jones qualifying last after being fastest in practice as Dunbar leads the first lap. And this is not looking good at all. Jones is going to go four wide. Gets into Joshua Michaels. And around goes the 32. Backs it into the outside wall. And an aggressive move by Christopher Jones. As there is Bo the Cameron. Right behind them. J Christopher Jones, last man. First man out. Tyler Black just went from, I think, seventh to first in two laps. Dunbar not giving up easily. He goes back to Black's inside. Aiden Smith still looking all the way on the bottom. Three wide off of turn two. Michaels, though, will definitely head to the last chance qualifier. He'll be joined there by his teammates, Mitchell Carter and Ace Wild. So all of the team velocity trucks struggling in their heat races. All three of them in incidents. And team owner Zach Rogers must be shaking his head up on the pit box. Sony Cup Series and Hardy's National Series off this weekend, so nothing for anybody to do. Got a lot of Sony Cup Series faces in the garage area. A lot of Hardy's guys down for the dirt fun. Bummed that they can't race in it, but here to have a blast. Got the roller coaster outside of turn one there. Black and Dunbar, though, what a fight for this race lead. As right now, Lane Sanders is the first man out. Now make it Christopher Jones, first man, or last man in for the 57. But Griffin Lapo McDermott on the verge of being knocked out of this top eight. It's three laps to go this time by. Christopher Jones trying to move his way up, makes a late move, three wide on TJ Smith. Sticking TJ in the middle with GLM to his outside. Christopher can't quite get the bite as Aiden Smith's looking for the race lead. Black swings it up to the top. Dunbar had a pretty good line there going in. Now Black gets the run off the corner exit. Side-by-side -side photo finish there at the line of two to go. Advantage Aiden Smith. We've had quite the wild card winners out of the heats, two Fords and a Toyota. Smith looking to be the first Chevy to get a heat win. As the Rams, look at Chase Dunbar. What a move that was on his part. The Rams might not get a heat win at all. As it looks like Aiden Smith's in the best position at the white. He'll dive it in on Tyler Black in turn one. Can he get the bite off of turn two though? Doesn't look like it. He's going to duck back into the draft line. Here comes Griffin Label McDermott now. Does he get Tyler Black to shoot up the track? Not quite. Coming to the checkered flag. Aiden with a bit of a run. Can't quite get there. Tyler Black wins heat number four. And Lane Sanders is going to go to the last chance qualifier. Could not get back by. Christopher Jones.
So Lane Sanders, Bud the Camera, and Joshua Michaels, they will all head to the last chance qualifier. Reminder that four drivers do get in on provisionals. Top four from the LCQ and then four provisionals make the race. Six drivers will go home. So we're going to take a little bit more of a break here and we'll gear up the feud for the last chance qualifier. Brandon Morris has been cleared to race the LCQ. Gearing up for the last chance qualifier, 16 laps of action, top four advance to the race and then four drivers will make it into the field on provisionals sending just six drivers home from the race today main event will start in roughly an hour and a half to two hours away lane sanders got the dice roll to be on the pole out of his finishing position and the green flag is out 16 laps caution flags will fly if there is an incident Brandon Morris and Wyatt Quayle had to start on the final row as they finished 12th in their respective heat. As heats 1 and 2 were the only heats with 12 drivers. Heats 3 and 4 had 11 drivers. So Lane Sanders so far so well holding off Zachary Bilson for the top position. But it's the top four positions that matter as Major Robinson looking to get Coyote Autosport into their first Napa Truck Series race this season. Remember, Texan is selling all their stuff to this team for 2022. And Major trying to get this team into a race before the year is said and done. No confirmed plans for Major next year within the FBRL as Nick Breeding's going to crowd up into him almost four wide there for a second as Ace Wild trying to fight his way through the field along with teammate Mitchell Carter. They were involved in an accident in Heat 1. Joshua Michaels in Heat 3 is trailing behind them as Zachary Bilson has passed Lane Sanders for the race lead. Now here at this dirt track, especially at the Springfield Mile, we're seeing a lot of draft come into play, but the drivers have really been able to just kind of throw their trucks in and get them to stick as Lane makes quick work to get back to his inside. As Benny Watson, who was involved in an incident in his heat, heat number two, I believe. He's fighting up here in the top four. Okay, my game has frozen. And we are good to go. That was strange. Mitchell Carter fighting for the race lead now. Benny Watson looking at his inside. Almost contact between Bilson and Lane Sanders. How about Brandon Morris trying to get up here and challenge for a position? As Ace Wild and others struggling still at the back. As Monaco, the Cameron, and Phil Parker, Wyatt Quayle basically all still just kind of hoping for an accident at this point. Reading all the way down near the wall as Mitchell Carter leads this thing. Three Fords and one Toyota, one out of the four heat races. Ram and Chevy coming away with nothing. But Carter looking to win this last chance qualifier. Stryvers will start from 33rd to 36th. By making the main event. Behind all those drivers that made it in on the heats, they will have a lot of work to do and they will have to be very careful. We saw the four wide craziness in heat one. You don't want to end up in that at the back of the field if there's a big wreck. Watson will clear Sanders for second as we're halfway through the last chance qualifier. No incidents so far. Greeting in the final transfer spot, spot of fourth place as Sanders will make a move on Carter once again for the race lead. Bilson right there, first man out with Robinson, second man out. Reeves and Ace Wild in striking distance, as is Joshua Michaels, as Quayle has started to lose the draft. Carter falling back to fourth. 
Bilson going to make a move to the inside, looking to get into that final transfer position. Got the owner points up. The 42 would not be in range for a provisional. All those teams that have been attempting races, they earned one back after Pensacola. There are several teams, though, with just one provisional left, and one of those teams is the 87, driven by Nick Reading, as well as the 9 of Ian Brandt, the 3 of Zachary Bilson, and the 67 of Dunbar. Brandt and Dunbar, though, race their way into the main event. Reading and Bilson are down here in this last chance qualifier. It's the 10 of Reeves has currently two provisionals left. Heading into this next five race stint, drivers, or well rather teams, that have attempted 20 races on the season will get one more Provo for the final two races. But you don't wanna be without provisionals heading into the next four races. It's gonna be very tough with a lot of Hardy's National Series paired races coming up as well as the last two Sony Cup Series paired races coming up. Certain teams will be running when they're not usually running, especially the zero, the 16, and the 76. So being top six and go or go home is gonna be difficult after Chicagoland as we have all these paired up races coming up to end the year back to the action though lane sanders is leading benny watson though right on his bumper as breeding and carter fighting for third now bilson to carter's inside bilson wants to race his way in he knows that 22 is top 30 and owners points he'll get in no problemo Trying to think here as they run, who would make it into the main event? I believe it would be the 10, the 3, the 23, and the 32 on provisionals. Carter looking to the inside of Breeding once again. Watson passing Lane Sanders for the race lead. Lane going to go right back to his inside. As both of them will slide up the track in turns one and two. Breeding now looking to put his name in the hat for the last chance qualifier winner. And Draft has pretty much kept Lane from pulling away. Bilson appears to be the closest to fight for that final spot. Major Robinson and Ace Wild side by side. Major trying to do all he can to get this 42 truck up towards the front and fight for this transfer position. But he is stuck on the inside of the 23. Can Bilson do anything here on the white flag lap to get by Carter? Carter's going to the inside of the defensive line. Lane Sanders will win the last chance qualifier. And side by side for fourth, it'll be Mitchell Carter who gets in along with Nick Breeding and Benny Watson. So that sticks Bilson, Robinson, Ace Wild, Michaels, Reeves, Monaco, Morris, the Cameron, Quayle, and Phil Parker all outside. So starting 37th will be the 10 of Nelson Reeves, 38th the 3 of Zachary Bilson, 39th the 23 of Ace Wild, and 40th will be the 32 of Joshua Michaels. That'll leave the three with no provisionals for the next four races and the 10 with just one provisional. The 23 and the 32 will be down to two provisionals. So those provisionals starting to get very few and rare with these teams that have been using them all season long. You could start to see those guys that struggled here in the last chance qualifier start to make some races that way. Such as Monaco in the 37, and of course, the 89, 96, 66, and 69. But Lane Sanders, your last chance qualifier winner. Benny Watson breeding and Carter in that way through the top four with Bilson, Ace Wild, Michaels, and Reeves making it in via 
provisional. So with that said, I'll see you guys in a few hours for the main event. 40 laps of action here for the 16th race of the season at the Illinois State Fairgrounds at the Springfield Mile Dirt Track.